So today I want to talk about Golang from the standpoint of a JavaScript developer. I've been using JavaScript my entire career. JavaScripts are a great language, very flexible as a dynamically typed language. You can build things very rapidly without worrying about data structures and all that. It's a powerful language as well, but it also allows you to shoot yourself in the foot a lot, which is why when you're building a large scale application that just really needs to be reliable, it's kind of nicer to use a compiled language like Golang, for example. So first thing I want to talk about is data structures, right? When you're building an app, you're just going to need to build complex data structures like ints and strings aren't really enough. Fortunately, it's really easy to build your own data types. Uh, so type person, struct, a person has a name and an age. Okay, cool. We have a person. So Golang is not object oriented, but it does allow you to do object oriented kind of things like this for example i just added a receiver method and it's going to return a value if p dot is adult so yeah it becomes really easy to create data structures and add behavior which i don't know it looks like oop but it's technically not so another cool thing you can do with types is you can extend a base data type. This is kind of useful when you don't need something complex, but you need behavior. For example, type password string. So let's say you want to parse passwords. You want to validate them and all that good stuff. But a password really is just a string. You don't have to create a complex data type for it. You can do type password string. And what you can do is add a receiver method to that. Uh, validate maybe and have it return an error the length of password is less than five return an error short turn nil and cool now we have our own custom thing so password I can initialize this er equals password dot validate and er not nil then panic er and then if I run the app, we can see that it panicked and showed the error. Uh, that's another nice thing that you can do is extend the base data types to add your own behavior to it. Which, honestly, you could have just made a validate function that takes in a string too. But it's just kind of nice to have a little more structure than that. So typically, you would want to use unit testing to add a bunch of test cases to make sure stuff works. Golang allows you to really easily create unit tests. You go in... Typically, you use the name of the file you want to test, underscore test.go. And we can go ahead and create a test function here. So we want to test password validate. So I'm going to create an invalid password, and it should throw an error. P equals password123, or let's use something else. P error equals p.validate. And I want to assert that that is an error and it's not just a nil value and then all we have to do is go test but it's throwing an error because i need to install this third party library called testify which is kind of the standard thing that folks use with golang and so i just do go mod vendor and that's going to automatically install this module for me or any modules within the whole project actually and now let's try that again go test cool it works now we can validate this by making a string that is is valid and this should actually fail the test cool and it shows me that the test failed so that easy like i wrote a unit test sure i had to install this one third-party library but it's just really straightforward Testing is built in to go. And yeah, I really, it makes me want to write unit tests more often. It, it makes me want to take a test driven approach uh, more often than I would in JavaScript. JavaScript's nice. You got Mocha and Jest and stuff like that too. But I don't know. I just like the way that Go does it a little bit more. So the next thing I want to talk about is Go routine. So when you have a long running operation, you need to be able to run it in the background. You might have multiple long running operations and you run run all of them simultaneously. Now you can do this in JavaScript, right? You can use uh, promise.all 
right with a bunch of promises and this will run them all like concurrently i guess so javascript is single threaded it's it can run things in the background but really all that means is that it has some scheduling where it'll sort of switch between all these different things it's doing on one thread basically you can achieve a higher level of performance with golang if you have a lot of calculations a lot of long running uh, operations happening so Let's say we have this function, that long running operation, um, and we're just gonna have it sleep for, to say two seconds. We run our long running operation, and we just run it. Start, wait, stop, and then it's done. So what if we have to run this long operation 10 times? Maybe we're fetching data from all these different APIs, but we don't have to wait and do it one at a time. We wanna do it all at the same time so that we can get all of that data as soon as possible. Well, if I didn't know how to do this in a multi-threaded way, I would just line them up in a loop. Okay, so we're just gonna loop through each long running operation and see what happens. So start, operation done, done, and it's just gonna wait. It's actually gonna take 20 seconds because each one is waiting two seconds. So th the point is, this is gonna take a long time. This is just not how we wanna do it. So Golang has a really simple way of running multi-threaded logic. Literally, all you'd have to do is put Go right here. But one thing about multi-threaded logic is that you have to know when things are done. So it does get a little more tricky, but Golang does have nice helpers for basically creating locks and mutexes and, and dealing with multi-threaded logic in a really simple way. So if we wanted to run multiple long running operations simultaneously, we would have used go routines. So go funk. Uh, so we have this go routine here. We have something called a wait group. And what we can do is for each iteration, we add one item to the wait group. And then once this operation is done, we say done. Throughout all of those iterations, we actually want to wait until everything is done. And now let's run it. Okay, so now we can see, yeah, it took about two seconds to get all this done because that's the length of the operation. But it actually performed all of them as quickly as it could, uh, running them all in different Go routines, which are not necessarily threads, but it might be a thread depending on a bunch of stuff happening under the hood. So yeah, those are the reasons why I really uh, enjoy using Golang. It gives me a greater sense of security. First of all, the IDE is gonna give me a lot of tips and pointers and warnings and errors and stuff to help me write some good code. But also the compiler won't even build the app if data types are wrong and all that. So for my fellow JavaScript developers, maybe give Golang a shot. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a dope language.